Can we bless the name of the Lord in the house? Bless the name of the Lord in the house. Somebody give God a mighty shout of praise in the house tonight. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Good night to one and all, and to those on the live, those on YouTube, those on Facebook. Welcome and greetings in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. We give God thanks for his goodness, for his mercies, for his love, and for all that he has been doing towards us as his people. To my unsafe friends, my vaccine friends, greetings and welcome to this or night's fast as we celebrate under the theme, the weapons of war. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask those in house and those on the live just to stand with me and together uh, in unison, those on the live, I'm going to ask those to stand wherever you can. And we'll all pray God's blessings upon his word that he is about to release to his people in the name of Jesus Christ. So together, let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for your goodness. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for your compassion because they feel not. Lord, we thank you that your anger lasts but for a moment. God, we thank you that there is no God like you. God, there was none before you. And God, there will be none after you. Father, we thank you, God, that you are the bishop and shepherd of our souls. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are our shepherd uh, and we are your sheep. Father, we thank you, God, that you are our battle axe. You are the rock on which we stand. Lord, all other ground is sinking sand. Father, we thank you, God, that you are the rock in a weary land, a shelter in a time of storm. Father, the songwriter declares, when the storms of life are raging over me in the rock, I will hide. Father, we come tonight, Holy Spirit, in your presence. Lord, the songwriter declares, better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. And God, David declared that I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. And so, Father, as we come in your presence, Lord, in-house and through the live, Father, those are tuning in from Facebook, those, God, from YouTube. Father, wherever they are in this country and in the globe, God, we decree and declare that your word will locate them nonetheless in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we decree and declare that God, as your words are released, Father, you said that the words that you speak, O oh God, they are spirit and they are life. So Father, we decree and declare tonight, God, that as your words go forth, that God, the intended purposes for which you release the holy God will be accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God, your word says that your words will not return unto your void, but will accomplish that which you please and make the thing prosper where unto you sent it. And God, your word declares that you are not a man that you should lie. And so, Father, we decree and declare tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that God, as your words are released, that God, somebody's spirit, oh God, will be touched, that somebody, Holy Spirit, oh God, will lead within them. And God, we decree and declare that as the words are released tonight, God, that chains will be broken, uh, that somebody's heaven, Holy Spirit, will be opened in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that as your words are released tonight, God, that everything out of place will come into place and everything, God, that is disoriented, God, will come back into divine alignment in the name of Jesus. For your word declares that we are to let all things be done in decency and in order. So, Father, we decree and declare tonight that everything that is out of order, God, will come into divine alignment in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that the airwaves are subjected to your blood and to your power. Lord God, we decree and we declare that there shall not be any disruption, oh God, to the releasing and the delivery of your word 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we take authority over every ear waves and we decree and we declare that every ear God will hear your word, that every heart, Holy Spirit, will receive your word. Father, we declare that God, every heart that is solid, Father, we command every heart to become as flesh in the name of Jesus and God, we decree and we declare that every spirit that is bound, Lord God, that by releasing of your word in this house, that somebody's spirit, oh God, will be loosed from the chains and the restrictions, oh God, and the limitations in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we decree and declare tonight that as the word is released, Holy Ghost, that a spirit that is weak, oh God, will gain strength and mount up with wings like an eagle in the name of Jesus. God, we decree and we declare that knees that are weak at the hearing, oh God, of your words, that their knees will become as hands, feet, and they will leap to new heights in the name of Jesus. God, we declare and we decree tonight, Father, that your will must be done it shall be done because nothing God can upset or obstruct your words in the name of Jesus father we decree and we declare tonight that as your words are released Holy Ghost that revelation in the spirits of your people will be birthed God and the understanding of your church will come to enlightenment in the name of Jesus God we decree and we declare God that as we speak as you speak tonight that clarity will come to a believer that an unsaved will be convicted that the spirit God of a backslider will come under supernatural conviction in the name of Jesus God we decree and we declare tonight that as your words go forth Lord that it shall operate as an armor and it shall break into pieces God every rock of opposition in the lives of your people Lord God we decree and we declare that as the word of God go forth Hallelujah. That God, it shall armor and it shall break. And your people, Holy Ghost, will be delivered. May your church be edified. Let your name be glorified. And let the devil and his operators be supernaturally terrified in the name of Jesus Christ. Let those on the live and those in us say, Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. So to those who are just tuning in, greetings and welcome in Jesus Christ's name. The theme, as you know it, is entitled, The Weapons of War. Amen. And the text for tonight, believers in house and those on the live, uh, will be taken from 2 Corinthians 10, which is the theme verse, uh, verse 4. And it declares, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. And it begins by saying, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every I think that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The end of the portion of God's holy words when I read by saying thanks be to God. Bless the name of the Lord. The weapons of war. You know believers on the live and in house some years ago when I think I was about between 19 to 21, I believe it was a Wednesday morning on my bed that the Holy Spirit uh, gave me a re revelation with regards to prior. And the revelation was as this. It stated, or the Spirit stated, that when you pray, you open the armory of heaven activating the artilleries with unlimited ammunition. Let me say that again. When you pray, you open the armory of heaven, activating the artilleries with unlimited ammunition. Now, if you're wondering, believers on the live and in-house, what is an armory? An armory is a place where weapons are kept are stored 
artilleries, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can be defined as heavy caliber weapons. And ammunition, ladies and gentlemen, uh, could be defined as bullets, gunpowder, grenades, and the list continues. And so it is, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that as I stated Sunday, uh, that resident in the Bible or the book or the word of God are weapons that a believer has access to and weapons that are designed specifically to deal with any issue in the, the sun in the name of Jesus Christ. Sunday I stated believers in Christ that resident in the word of God or the Bible there are approximately 100 plus weapons that the believer has access to. Amen. But the weapons church are stored in a place called armory. Amen. Now church of God what we got to understand believers is that heaven has a armory. The weapons that the believer has are stored in the armory of heaven. But the reality is, church, is that armory is a place that carries a coat. Hello, somebody. Armory is a place that has a key or some armories, believers in Christ, as a password that you have to put in to get the weapons out. Hello, and so the same principle church of the living God applies to the believers. Hello, heaven as an armory. But to access the weapons or to activate the weapons uh, needed for your particular issue, there first must be the password. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. And so the question is, Church of God, how do I, as a believer, uh, gain access to the armory of heaven? Uh, to find the answer, Church, we have to go to Matthew 16 and verse 19. Hello, somebody. For the scripture says, Matthew 16, verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loose in heaven now church when i read earlier on in first kings in second in corinthians 10 verse 4 the bible says for the weapons of our warfare no weapons church is a pure word which signifies to us that there are different types different kinds for different purposes amen there are some whose destruction is amazing. Huh? But then there are some whose destruction is beyond catalysmic. Hello, somebody. So the weapons that the believers has access to church can be likened to a army, as I stated Sunday. Now, we know, church, that in a military, there are different ranges of missiles. There are the short-range missiles, and there are the long-range missiles. Amen. There are missiles, church, that the enemy can't detect until it hits the target. And then, church, there are missiles that we call nuclear, which are weapons of mass destruction. And so, similarly, believers who are listening, listening to me tonight, in the armory of heaven, there are weapons of mass destruction. But the question is, do the church know the weapons? Hello, somebody. So, Matthew 16, verse 19. And Jesus says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Now, let us stop here for a moment. For Jesus did not say, I will give you the key to the kingdom. He says, I will give you the keys, which is plural, which therefore then means, church of God, that the believer has keys to access various things to the kingdom of heaven. Hello, somebody. But the thing is, Church of God, that I've come to realize that even though believers are key to access certain things in the kingdom, many believers, because of spiritual laziness, have lost the keys. Now, if you lose the key, you can't access the armory of heaven. 
Hello, somebody. And the thing, church, about these keys is that you can't cut the key to gain access. Uh, a cut key doesn't work. The key that you lose, church, you have to go back to the manufacturer or the original source for a different key. Hello, somebody. So if you lose your key, a cut key won't work. The made in China key won't work. It has to be a key from the originator or from the giver of keys. Hello, somebody. So the Bible says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So that means, church of God, that heaven has doors. Ah, because if heaven did not have a door, then you would not need a key. Hello, somebody. So that therefore then means, church, that the believer has key to their blessings. A believer has key to their anointing. A believer has key to their deliverance. A believer has key to their testimonies. But the question is, ladies and gentlemen, are you using the keys in the name of Jesus Christ? Hello, church of God. We know that every lock was designed with a specific shape to accommodate a specific key. But what you find, church of God, is that you got believers who are trying to open up certain doors using the wrong key. Ladies and gentlemen, wrong key equates to no access. Hello, somebody. And so it is, church, that Jesus says, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. And then he went on to say, church, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So because, church of God, we have access or we have the keys, a believer can shut heaven and a believer can open heaven. What am I saying here is that a believer has the ability to close the windows of heaven or open it in the name of Jesus Christ. To prove this, look on Elijah. For Elijah said, there shall be no rain but according to my word. Ha! It did not say according to God's word. Believers, hear me very well tonight. That you can get to a place of spiritual maturity that you literally begin to talk like the most time self in the name of Jesus Christ. Only men of stature can talk like as though Elijah did in Jesus Christ's name. And so it is believers in Christ that the believer has the ability to open heaven or to close heaven. And what you find, church, is that when the believer closes heaven by our inability to use our keys, there are manifestations of destruction on the planet itself. But when the believers use the keys on hope and heaven, then we see the full manifestation of God in the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. So what God wants believers in Christ in this generation are men and women who will use the keys to hope and heaven so the hand of God can work to reap souls for the kingdom. And so the question is believers in Christ tonight. As a believer, are you a practical believer with the keys? Or are you just a Christian with a bunch of keys that are useless to you? And so are causing others to suffer lost because of your inability to use the keys in the name of Jesus Christ. Believers understand me, use the keys. If you're discouraged, use the keys. Hallelujah. If the devil is on your track, use the keys. My God Almighty. If your life is dry, use the keys. Uh, God Almighty, things ain't going well for you. Use the keys in Jesus Christ's name. And so it is believers in Christ that when a believer uses the keys to open the armory of heaven, which is the place where weapons are stored, then the believer gains access to the artilleries that are stored in the armory. Hello, somebody. So the keys that Jesus gives us, gives us the ability to open the armory of heaven. And when we open the armory church, then the believer has approximately 101 weapons at their disposal. Now the question is church, 
depending on your circumstances. What becomes critical is to use the right weapon. Hallelujah. Understand me, church. Physically speaking, is that if a country wants to eliminate a country off the face of the globe, huh? a regular missile can annihilate a great number. But that's not the intended purposes of the country. The country purpose is to wipe that country off the face of the globe. And the most suitable weapon to do that church is what? A nuclear missile. If that drop, everything ceases to exist. Now, I've come to realize, church, that there are believers in the kingdom of God who are using weapons that are effective but not the most appropriate for the current situation. What am I saying? That there are believers, church, who are using weapons that are effective but not the most appropriate. It gives results, but it takes a longer time for the results to come. Understand me, church, that if you want to cut down a cedar tree, amen, a regular saw can cut it. But it will take a longer time. But to cut it in quick succession, you will need a chainsaw in the name of Jesus Christ. Because a chainsaw church is more powerful and it cuts it in record time in Jesus Christ's name. Similarly, church, I come from country. So country people use cutlass enough to weed the yard. It's effective, but it takes a longer time as opposed to when you use a lawn mower. Hello, somebody. So believers, church, have been using weapons, but, but, but given the situation, the most appropriate weapon was not used. So deliverance and your testimony takes a longer time to come. Hallelujah. And so it is, ladies and gentlemen, that when the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, it therefore then means that they were not designed by the intellect and intelligence of mankind, but the God of our forefathers was he who specifically designed and forged them for the believers to use. Because he knew, church of God, that in this life there will be problems. So he gave us weapons at our disposal in Jesus Christ's name. Now, I will not be able to go into all of them, but hopefully I can probably go through, go probably use uh, three, and then next week I'll probably see how much I can divulge into in deeper details. But one of the weapons, stretch of God, that normally catches my attention is the weapon uh, called earthquake. Somebody say earthquake. 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 Amen. Believers, we know the devastation that an earthquake can cause. Hello. We know that an earthquake is a violent shaking of the earth crust. And, and it can be so violent, church, that cracks can come in the earth and buildings can topple over. Yeah. But then, church of God, there is a specific kind of earthquake that God uses when his children gives him the go-ahead to use it. Now, believers, understand is that God can use earthquake as a weapon to deal with the kingdom of darkness. Yes? Some enemies that deserve devastating blows. An earthquake church creates a landmark. It can create violent eruption everywhere. When God wants to silence the enemy completely, he commands an earthquake to destabilize them. So if you want God to destabilize your enemies tonight, uh, then an earthquake church is what is necessary in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's turn to Matthew 27 verse 51, for it states, 
and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks were rent. Now understand me, church, is that there were two instances where this weapon in the Bible was demonstrated by God. One church was Jericho. The second incident church was in the New Testament in the book of Acts when Paul and Silas was cast into prison. Amen. So when we look church on Jericho, the Bible said that God commanded his people uh, to go around Jericho one time for six days or one time for six days and on the seventh day go around the wall seven times. And the Bible said, church, with the obedience of his people, uh, that Jericho wall came down after a mighty shaking. Now, church, understand is the fact that Jericho is a fortified place. But for the walls to fall, church, it required a shaking that was beyond ordinary. Hello, somebody. Now, understand me tonight is the fact that church Jericho was an impenetrable place. And you find believers in Christ that there are believers who are in Jericho. Huh? They want to get out, but they cannot because the walls does not allow them to come out of the place that they are in. So Jericho church spiritually is a place of restriction. Hello. Now, when you go to the New Testament in the book of Acts, uh, when Paul and Silas was cast into prison, uh, uh, like Jericho Church, uh, uh, the prison was a place of restriction. Hello. So their movements were restricted. And so you find believers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who are in this time, uh, uh, their progress are restricted. Their blessings are restricted. Uh, everything about their lives, oh God, seems restricted. Could it be, ladies and gentlemen, that you are in the prison of the enemy? Uh, could it be, ladies and gentlemen, that you are in the Jericho of the enemy? Hello. And so the Bible said, church, that when Paul and Silas began to see, Ah, the Bible said, church, that something happened to the foundation of the prison. Now, church, understand that whenever God uses an earthquake, it normally goes to shake the foundation of that which is assembled and assigned against your life. Hello, somebody. Further proof, Joel 3 verse 16. You can read it when you have time. Now notice church of God according to Matthew 27 51 uh, that when, G when Jesus gave up the ghost and said it is finished notice what happened was that the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom which means believers in Christ uh, that whenever God uses an earthquake uh, he will destroy the head of that which is monitoring in your life and he will destroy the foundation of that which occupies or makes your life under siege in the name of Jesus Christ. So whenever an earthquake is used, church, uh, the head becomes damaged. And the foundation of that which the enemy has over your life becomes damaged in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. So the Bible said, church, that when Paul and Silas began to sing, uh, the Bible said that something happened to the foundation of the prison. Believers, understand me tonight. I don't know who you are, but if your life is restricted, if your progress is restricted, it therefore then means, believers, that like Paul and Silas, you now have to invoke God into your prison. Ah, the Bible said they began to sing and pray at midnight. But their sacrifices church became the magnet that invoked God to trigger an earthquake on their behalf. 
Now to understand was that the Bible said that when the foundation of the prison was shaken violently, something else happened. Because the Bible said that the prison gates flew open. Can I tell somebody that that the prison that you are in, in that very prison lies your very blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. But for the gates to fly open, there has to be a violent shaking on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello somebody. And the Bible said church that the foundations were shaken and the prison gates flew open. Can I tell a believer tonight is that if your progress is restricted then, then you need an earthquake in the name of Jesus Christ. Now believers understand the Bible says when the prison door flew open uh, Paul and Silas came out. Uh, and, and, and the prison manager who was there, when he saw what happened, he became fearful and then he gave his life to Jesus. Can I tell somebody tonight that the prison that you are in, when the earthquake locates that prisoner, everybody in the prison who is not saved, by virtue of the hand of God on your behalf, they too will become saved when they see the glory of the shaking. Of God in your prison situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. So, believers, an earthquake has the ability uh, to shake things out of place and to shake things in place. Now, understand me, church. Further reference Agai 2, verse 6, and Agai 2, verse 21. Now, Agai 2 verse 21 says, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Now, understand the believers in Christ tonight is the fact that church, that there are believers tonight who are out of place. Huh? Now, God will use the earthquake church to deliver his children, but he will also use the earthquake to get the believers in line in the name of Jesus Christ. Now understand the church. It's the fact that there are believers who are out of place. There are believers, man of God, who are disoriented. There are believers whose life are all rugged and jagged. Now what God does sometimes is that he will shake you violently to get everything back into alignment with his will and his purposes. Now understand me church is the fact that there are different intensities to earthquake. Uh, there are some that when they come you only feel a tremor. Uh, there are some when it shake uh, trees topple over. But then there are some ladies and gentlemen, because it is so violent when they shake, our roads become destroyed and buildings become destroyed. Now understand me tonight, believers, uh, do not let the hand of God to go on an earthquake that is violent, that will destroy some things that you are putting over your God to get your attention in the name of Jesus. Now believers in Christ, hear me very well. Hear me very well. It's the fact that an earthquake can also be used by God as a bondage breaker. <laughs> now, now understand me church. If your family is under bondage, fetters and chains, you need the earthquake of God. To shake the foundations upon which those bondages are built. If your marriage is under bondage. ah, You need the earthquake of God to shake the foundation of that very bondage. In the name of Jesus Christ. If your life, your ministry, your church, your community. If your environment. Believers in Christ is under bondage. Then it is the earthquake of God that you need to destroy the very foundations upon which these uh, powers are built 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Believers understand me tonight. Is the fact that church of the living God is that God is not slack concerning his promises. And somebody got to understand me tonight is that if you need freedom, ha, the earthquake is what you need. Understand me tonight, church. If you want the foundation of the enemy to be shattered into pieces the earthquake is what you need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ somebody bless the name of the Lord in the house tonight the second weapon church that I'll run through tonight is the fire of the Holy Ghost no church understand there is the consuming fire there is the fire of the Holy Ghost and then there is also the fire of God. I will not look on the consuming fire. I will not look on the fire of God. But I will look, church, on the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bless the name of the Lord. Believers understand is that the fire of the Holy Ghost is a combination of the force of the Holy Ghost and a combination of fire. You find this church of God in Matthew 3 verses 11 to 12 and Malachi 3 2 and Mark 1 verse 8. Church of God hear me tonight. What this generation needs is not the fire of God. Is not the consuming fire. But what this generation needs, church of God, is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. There are blessings that the enemy, listen. There are generational blessings that the enemy has confiscated. What you need, ladies and gentlemen, is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. You are oppressed. You are depressed. You are suppressed. What you need, ladies and gentlemen, is the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Generational bondage. Dark manifestations. Your life is under siege. What you need, believers in Christ, is the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Believers, understand me tonight. Is that you'll find that there are believers who are saved, but under siege. Believers who are saved, but are held captive. Believers who are saved, but their lives are dictated by the powers that exist. Believers who are saved. But are operating as nothing but zombies. Believers who are saved. Physically they look alive. But spiritually ladies and gentlemen. They are nothing but dead. Ah, What they need church is the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the Bible said church. When he descended on the day of Pentecost. Uh, it was as if there was. Cloven tongues of fire. Then power. So what some believers need right now. Is the fire of the Holy Ghost. To burn oppression. To burn suppression. Uh, to burn everything. That the devil has orchestrated. In your life. Ah. I understand me church tonight that some believers connections will never be severed unless the fire of the Holy Ghost manifests in your life. Understand me church that there are some connections there are some linkages there are some associations 
that will never ever be severed until the fire of the Holy Ghost shows up in your lives. Hallelujah. There are some, understand church, that there are some believers who have been battling some ancient powers. Powers that are centuries old. Powers that exist for seven hundreds of years. And you have been battling with it. I'm here to tell a believer tonight. That any power that you are contended with. The fire of the Holy Ghost is what you need in the name of Jesus Christ. Understand me tonight believers. That even before I close, we'll do some declarations. Because I believe I've got to understand is that the fire of the Holy Ghost is a bondage breaker. And I don't care if your bondage was from 10 years ago or 7 years ago. I don't care if it's generational or from both sides of your family. The fire of the Holy Ghost is more than able to break them in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 No believers on the live, hear me tonight. There are five declarations I will do before we move on to the third and final one for tonight. Those on the live, hear me very well. I don't know what your bondage are. I don't know how many there are. But tonight, if you believe God made these declarations like your life and your family depend on them in the name of Jesus. Can the believers stand in the house tonight and we will make these five declarations and move on to the next weapon. Let's go. Say, oh, fire of the Holy Ghost. Arise and burn to ashes. Every plantation of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. Say the fire of the Holy Ghost. Arise and put my enemy. Of my destiny to shame. In the name of Jesus. Say the power of the Holy Ghost. Arise and put to shame every agent of darkness in the name of Jesus. Say, the power of the Holy Ghost, arise and let every prophet of Baal be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Say, the power of the Holy Ghost, arise and let every power chasing my blessings away be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Give God a mighty shout of praise. Give God a mighty shout of praise. Give God a mighty shout of praise. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Now we go to the third and final one for tonight, believers, which is the word of God. The believers know that according to Ephesians 6, it says that the word, which is the part of the armor, is the sword of the spirit. So we know that the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, according to Ephesians 6, is an offensive weapon. But then the Bible said that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen? And so you find the church in Hebrews 4 verse 12. Hello somebody. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4 8, verse 4 that the word of a king, that where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Believers understand me tonight. Is that there are altars that are assembled against your lives. And there are powers, church, that continuously release words of curses against your lives. There are powers, believers in Christ, that continuously release curse for us to fail, curse for us 
to not succeed cause for us to be the tail and not the head. Now understand me church is that when you look on Mount Carmel which was the mountain of confrontation was the fact that church, there was a showdown between powers. Amen. And so believers are got to understand church that there is always a contention between your destiny and those who want to see you not to fulfill it. Now understand me believers in Christ is that the devil is always speaking negative against your life. But the question is church, how will you respond as a believer? Uh, the best way to respond uh, to the negatives of the enemy church is by using the word of the living God. Hello church, it becomes word against word. Hello, somebody. So a believer who does not know the word, you are at a great disadvantage. Because when the enemy releases a curse against your life, if you do not know the word to come back and to cancel, you are in serious jeopardy. Hello, somebody. So I implore a believer tonight, uh, get to know the word. Hello, somebody. Get to know the word. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman who needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Believers understand. When a believer knows how to use the word of God. You even get God to submit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because he said that he will, his words will not return unto him void. And I challenge a believer tonight. Get to know the word. Learn how to use it. And watch the hand of God work in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the name of the Lord in the house. I'm out of time. I'm out of time, unfortunately. So believers, I'll continue next week, all things being well. So tune in next week uh, while we'll continue and go more in depth in the name of Jesus Christ. So to my unsafe friends who are tuned in tonight, my vaccine friends the blood of Jesus Christ can be yours the Bible said God said to the, God said to Moses to tell, his, to tell the Israelites when I see the blood I will pass over believers there is one thing that guarantees protection and that my unsaved friends is the blood of Jesus Christ understand that every other blood attracts destruction but the blood of Jesus guarantees you protection you see no other blood gives life that is guaranteed because every other blood gives life that comes at a price but the blood of Jesus the only requirement my friend is for you to accept it and accept it wholeheartedly in the name of Jesus and the benefits will be yours I say friends tonight as a youth to a youth as a youth to a senior, give Christ a chance. So the comprehensive coverage can be yours in the name of Jesus Christ. My vaccine friends, come home for time is running short. Let's pray as I conclude tonight in Jesus Christ's name. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you, God, for your words. We thank you, God, for everything that you have released. We thank you, God, for the manifestation of your presence. Lord, your word has been released. Father, we decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that your church, O oh God, will learn and they will be edified. Father, I declare that as your words are released, that God, the issue that warrants your word, God, that they will uh, subdue to the functionalities of the weapons outlined tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare, Holy Ghost, that the believers, God, will begin to use the keys to the kingdom. Lord, I decree and declare tonight, God, that we will not get to the place where we will lose the keys, but God, we will protect the keys and use them, God, for the benefit of our life, family, and generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of the living God, rest upon every believer tonight. Father, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you will come, trigger our spirit 
hands, oh God, to pray and to seek your face. Lord, may the flame on our altars never grow dim, but God, help us as your children to maintain the flammability and the brightness of our fire on our altars. In the name of Jesus Christ, Spirit of the living God, help your church. For vain is the help of man. And God, as we go, go with us. Cocoon us. Continue, God, to bless those who are on the line. Continue, God, to overshadow them. Keep them and protect them. Let your will be done in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To one and all in social media land, God bless you. See you next week as we start at 7.30 so we can get more time to go in depth. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in in Jesus Christ's name.